what made you transition? What, why wine? Like, what made you transition from baseball to wine? That's the fun thing about being in the, in the wine industry. Hey, what up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Step Up to the Pout. I am Jayton Gunter. And I'm Scott Harrison. So we are here about all about wine, and we're about to get into one uh, definitely today. Like, you know what we always do? We always do our nice little wine reviews here, and we also break down um, specifics about wine and regions and anything that can help anybody pass their first level of becoming a sommelier. Uh, today we're talking about Zinfandel, but before we get into the Zinfandel, quick quick thing, man. Um, a few episodes ago, we were talking about wine tasting and you know I was breaking down like specifically what you should be doing when you're wine tasting. I know you got a glass in front of you. Why don't you go ahead and uh, show me what you remember and you know I'll let you know whether what, if you're doing something good, if you're falling off a little bit, just we'll, we'll, we'll go back and forth about it. So okay, I know you got a glass in front of you. I am. All right. <laughs> All right. So from what I read and from what I remember, you're supposed to look at the color first. Yes, sir. So I have my piece of paper, white paper here. And I'm in a room with like, okay, lighting. So I'm putting it up against the paper. All right. And I see a little, it's pretty dark in the middle. Okay. Um, light on the outside, I would say it's a, like a raspberry color on the outside. Okay. And this is a pretty young wine. It's a 2019. So I'm assuming that's the reason why it's uh, lighter. Actually, that's the reason why it's darker in the middle too. When darker, it's like really, middle, okay. yeah. When it's darker in the middle like that, and it's not arbor. So if it has like an arbor auburn rim, um, mm -hmm. they tend to be a little bit older wines. But if it's still like kind of a clear like uh, red uh, out outer side outer layer, and it's really dark in the middle, a lot of times depending on the varietal, um, that'll let you know. That'll give you a, a clue that it is more of a younger wine. So yes, when you said dark in the middle, I was already thinking that it's probably like. 2020 2019 oh okay all right so that's just right out the gate you thought that yeah well, <laughs> you're the pro okay <laughs> so i look at the color and then I, I i i turn it a little bit so again i'm not comfortable a swirl in my wine without anything <laughs> underneath okay. so i put okay. my hand underneath and i i, I swirl mm -hmm. and then i smell mm -hmm. one thing before you go off to the smell Okay. So when you're swirling, you still want to look, you want to put that, uh, you want to still look and see the legs. Now, again, I don't like legs. I don't like, I don't care about legs as far as quality, but it does, if you're blind tasting, it does give you a clue as to specific things like varietals, because there's some varietals that are more viscous than others. There's some uh, alcohol level. If it's like running really slow down on the glass, okay. A lot of times that'll let you know that it's higher alcohol. So it's viscosity and, and alcohol are two things that you're looking at. And that kind of gives you a clue as to what varietal it could be. Because there's some varietals that are always made and they're always, they're ripe, they ripen very early and get really like fruit forward. So they tend to have a little bit more higher alcohol. And so you can, just by looking at these legs, you can tell like, okay, so this is in the 14, 15 range. This, this may be like a Zinfandel. You know what I mean? Uh, depending on where it's coming from. So that also gives you a clue if you're blind tasting. Just something they keep in the back of your head when you're when you're really tasting. Just they're, they're, you want to take every clue you can and use it to your advantage to try to, you know, find out, discern which which grape varietal it is. So yeah, just a little thing to keep in the back of your head. Oh, I can relate to that. You're trying to look at a video of the upcoming pitch you're about to face, and you look at every detail as possible for an advantage. So. Yeah, okay. I, I can dig that. Okay, so I'm going to turn again and then. I would say very slow coming down with the legs. Okay. Very slow. It's something that could help you too is you can blow a little air in the wine so you can go like this, like just like a quick little. And you can it'll okay. it'll show the legs a little bit more distinct. Right, I, I see that. Yeah. Okay, but still slower than I from what I remember. So I'm thinking. So this is 
a higher alcohol wine here. Yeah, it's either that it's, it's either that it's a, a, a varietal that has high viscosity. Viscosity. Okay. So it can, so that can mean sugar, um, or alcohol. So like viscosity. So it's like there's some varietals, varietals that really go, they just have like they're always made with a little bit. Of, they always have a little residual sugar, such as okay. Zinfandel. And so you'll mm-hmm. see them run a little slower, and that'll give you like an idea whether it's um, it's viscosity or it's alcohol that's keep, that's making it run a little slower. But you keep that in the back of your mind, so when you're tasting, you're like, okay, now this, 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 and this are connecting to take me towards a varietal, and then that, then I got to taste it and figure out from there. So yeah. Okay, so, so I'm gonna do a little cheating here. I ha- I have the tasting card. Um, it doesn't bring out the residual sugar, but with Scott and Southern wine is very low. So yeah, it's a natural course. wine. So no additives, no added sugars. Um, if I were to guess, it's probably between 1.6 and 2. Which is low. Sugars. That's not bad at all. Yeah. That's not bad at all. So then it's more on that. Then it, if it's running slow, then it's maybe a, a, um, both of the things. It's a little bit of sugar and a little bit of the, hot, the alcohol that's making it okay. Really slow. Okay. So without cheating, Jayton, before we, I guess after we taste, I'm going to let you try to guess the alcohol content in this wine. So we won't, we're not there yet. Okay. So that's gonna, that's going to be your test. I'm testing the pro here. <laughs> okay. All good, man. All good. I'm, I'm winning. The pro. I want to see what you got. Okay, so you have the swirl, you have the legs, and then now the smell. Yep. Put your nose all the way in there. Yep. Oh, that smells amazing. Hmm. I'm, I'm getting like a plum. I'm getting a black cherry. Yep. Go to fruits first. That's exactly what you should do. A little floral, a little bit. Okay, so you have some flowers. So other than uh, fruit, you have some flowers going on there. Are there specific really flowers? I, Are they uh, like a rose petal or more like on the blue side, maybe purple violets? Um, I would say purple violet. Okay, so that also drives you to a specific varietal too. Um, mm-hmm. If you understand that certain flower, certain fruit and flowers um, normally are characteristic of specific varietals is drawing all this stuff is clues is drawing you to a specific varietal okay and the soil i can't really pick out okay so the earth is not jumping out for you is there anything um herbal like anything outside of wine or outside of uh fruit and flowers maybe pepper okay so there's a little pepper pepper going on there. black pepper good good that's usually easier for me to pick out than the soil so spice, there's a little bit of spice there for you. A little spice. Okay. Um, as far as oak, because you want to figure out if there's any oak on it, um, are there anything, anything that um, will connect oak to this wine, such as vanilla, cinnamon, um, nutmeg, anything like that that you're finding on the wine? Clove. More cinnamon. More cinnamon mm-hmm. than vanilla. Okay, so there, there's some oak on here. Not, a, not crazy oak, but there's some mm-hmm. oak here. So that lets that also lets you know that this wine was aged in oak. Some red wines are done in stainless steel, and you can and when you smell, it, you're like, okay, this is not oak at all. You can throw that out the window and go to stainless steel wine, red wines. You know, it's all clues. What What is your take on? So when you're smelling, uh, keeping your mouth open. They say to keep your mouth open the first time you smell, and then mm-hmm. closing it the second time. What is your take on that? I do the opposite. Um, I do, um, I, I, it's real, really whatever you feel comfortable with. But for me, I will first do it my natural way, which is with my mouth closed. And then I'll do it with, and then I'll do it with my mouth open. And see if I, if anything changes between the two. That's just how I do it. Everybody, is, everybody has their way of uh, smelling, but that's what I normally do. Okay, before we taste, so what are you smelling? What, what do you got here? Okay, so let's break down. You want to break down the Zen? Um, yeah. On the note, on the nose on this. So I definitely, I, I get a little bit of like 
dusty earth here. Um, it's not even like soil. It's more like a um, like sun-kissed, uh, like um, a far farm set, like land uh, type thing, like uh, kind of like uh, hay, like not even hay. It's it's really like it's really like sand, like kind of sandy, kind of sun-kissed though, like a little like warm day or hot day type of uh, earth going on here. Also get the uh, I also get raspberry. I I get a little bit of wild raspberry. I get some cherry going on here too, some red cherry. You're right. This is more on the uh, this is more on the purple flower, but I'm getting like lilacs type thing on the nose. Okay, so I do have the card here from Scout a and Seller. Bit of cinnamon too. The the 2019 Middle Jane. Zinfandel it says fruit forward and appealing with wild cherry and raspberry, uh, mint and white peppercorn on a full bodied frame and lingering finish. Pa pairs well with smoked foods and sharp cheeses. Think barbecue or grilled burgers with cheddar, which I'm having tonight. So it's perfect. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Definitely getting, I'm definitely getting some of that white pepper. That's definitely coming. I'm getting this, I'm getting the cinnamon thing too. And there is a little bit of a secondary minty, like eucalyptus thing going on here too. But it's a, it's kind of hidden under all the other stuff. It's there, but it's like a second, it's a second tier thing if you're really getting your nose in it. Uh, I want to taste it. It smells amazing. All right, let's go ahead and taste now, it. Let's go ahead and taste this thing right. real quick. Oh. Okay. So anybody who knows me, knows I'm hard on Zinfandel. I'm sorry, it's just who I am. I'm very, very, very hard on Zinfandel. Um, and this is killer, this is killer. Uh, one of the reasons I'm hard on Zinfandel is sometimes the alcohol gets away with the, uh, with the winemaker. Uh, sometimes it's uh, the fruit is too big, too bombastic, and there's no there's no acid to give it some structure. Like, I, okay, so I'm, I'm a man, I'm gonna take this to like, Gosh, I, maybe I shouldn't, but whatever. We're on a podcast. <laughs> hey, keep it I'm PG-13. A, I will keep it PG-13, but I'm going to take this to like... <laughs> I don't want to do that. That's objectifying. Okay, so... <laughs> it's that good, isn't it? I, I like I, I, I like curves, but I like curves to be contained. But let's, let's oh, put it okay. I got you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to be too crazy. I like it to be contained. And that's exactly what this wine is. It has, it has curves. It has some fruit. It's voluptuous. But it also has that acid backbone to give it some structure, which I'm digging quite a bit. There's a medium uh, acid wine, but it's good because the, the fruit is not too bad, too bombastic um, that you need over like too much acid to contain it. You just need about medium acid to contain this fruit. Um, I'm definitely getting some of the stuff we were talking about. Some of that wild raspberry is like the first thing that I'm tasting. I'm also getting that cherry in the mid palate to the finish. The herbs and 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 like pepper stuff kicks in more in the third quarter to the finish and stays there throughout the whole finish. Get a little vegetation too. I'm getting like this kind of broccoli kick on the finish, which is kind of cool. Um, Mm. Alcohol content, what do you think? I'm going to say 13.8, maybe 14. I think right around there. You're off a little bit. 14.9. This is Big Daddy right here. Woo, they contain this alcohol very well, man. But that's another thing in California too, and this is probably spot on because I, I feel like you guys are you guys really pay attention to like uh, details here. But you can be off by a whole point in California on alcohol. So like they may say on their label that it's like um, thirteen five, that means it could be like fourteen. You know what I mean? Or it could be thirteen. So that's okay, just something to remember. Like it may, they may say it's one type of uh, alcohol, but sometimes it's a little bit more, or a little bit less, depending on what it is. But I'm pretty sure that you guys are on top of yours here. And for this to be 14.9, oh, now I'm feeling it. See, uh, the way I, yeah, um, the way I gauge it is, um, and I probably should have gave it more time to really develop, but the way I gauge it is where I'm feeling it, the warmth in my body. 
Um, it's different for everybody else, but how I gauge alcohol is if it's up here in my chest and it stops there, the warmth, then I'm looking at probably like 13, 13, five, maybe. If it's right here in my, like right up at my uh, upper solar plexus, then I'll uh, be looking at 14. Well, I'll be looking at 14, around 14. And it's down here in my gut, like low gut, which this just hit. It's probably about 14, <laughs> 5 to 15. And it just, like now it's just sitting right there. And like, I can still feel the warmth there. So, yeah, I should have gave it more time to develop. But, yeah, this is, okay. for the alcohol content to be where it is, this is very well contained. Very, very, very well contained. Beautiful wine, man. A lot of strawberry mm -hmm. going on here, too, on the nose. The finish is long. Um, Tannins are medium for structure, for people asking about structure. Um, this is a wonderful wine, also found at Scout and Cellar. Uh, just so you guys who are vis watching the podcast can see, here's the label. So I don't think we showed you that earlier. And this is called Middle Jane at a Sonoma Valley 2019 Zinfandel from Scout and Cellar. Love the, I love the label with the little jersey jacket, like the jacket on. That's pretty yeah, dope. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Let me see here. You know, it's so yeah, funny. This, this is another one, this uh, Zinfandel. So I don't really know much about Zinfandel, but um, I, I think that this one has, uh, this is probably my fourth or fifth time having it. Mm -hmm. it. It never disappoints. This is something that I would drink uh, either at dinner or after dinner. Mm -hmm. I'm a bourbon guy too. So I like me too. Me too. strong before I go to bed. So this is definitely, and I know kind of doing this podcast during the day, this is necessarily not something that, that I would open um, before dinner, put it that way. But, but it never disappoints. I, I really like the wine. Um, I think it has a good finish. The alcohol is a little high. It gets mm -hmm. you a little bit if, you, if you're on an empty stomach. But um, it's a creeper. Still, <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll still recommend this wine to Zinfandel lovers again. So I, I kind of wanted to ask you, and I did read about this before. You said Zinfandel is is hard to please. So is that because the winemakers have such a hard time making a good Zinfandel, or is it just because you're not a big Zinf Zinfandel guy? So it's so it's an easy it's an easy grape to plant and actually you know uh, grow, but when you start trying to because it's so it ripens so heavy, it's very fruit forward, and the sugars can get really crazy on this. Um, a lot of times when they pick it and they bottle it, it's sometimes it tastes like fruit punch in a bottle with high alcohol. And I don't, and without the, without the acidic backbone for structure, and that's what drives me crazy. Now, when I first got into wine, Zinfandel was my favorite varietal because I was I was brand new to wine and any anything that was like big, bold fruit flavors, um, I love. I have no problem with people who, who dig it. I never talk bad on Zinfandel at all. But for me, my palate has gotten a little bit more restrained. And I look for nuances now. I look for uh, complexities that are done with a little bit more of an artist hand, as opposed to like just throwing everything against the wall and saying this is art. And some people dig it still. But for me, I like a little bit of subtlety. I like a little bit more of a um, complexity within the flow of the wine as opposed to beating you over the head with it. And Zinfandel tends to sometimes beat you over the head. Other varietals are a little bit more subtle. So that's that's the reason. Yeah. I have no problem with Zinfandel. Like my favorite, my favorite Zinfandel, just keeping it at 100 with you, is the Brown Zin uh, out of Napa, uh, black owned winery. And to me, I think Brown does the best Zinfandel in California. Now there's other Zinfandels that I like too, but that one for me is like, it's to another level. Like, it's just, you want to talk about with a painter's brush, like really drawing a, a beautiful picture of wine, of Zinfandel, that's the highest level that I've, I've tasted in California. Okay. Yeah, and I'll cool have to try that out today. And the cool thing, so let me give you a little background on Zinfandel because that was, we're, we're talking about Zinfandel and that needs to be said. Uh, Zinfandel originally is from Croatia. Um, originally, people thought it was from Italy, but it's not. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, Kissing cousin Primitivo is in Italy. They're 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 like of the same line, but Croatia is where Zinfandel, the varietal, comes from. 
uh, and then growing in California, we named it Zinfandel. Um, it is the one varietal out of all the varietals that we consider a California grape. Um, it's like, it's, it's home, like we are the main place for Zinfandel. You don't see it grown a lot of places all over the world. You see Zinfandel grown here and there's a reason for it. it it, it does really well in hot climates. So some of the regions you want to look at um, in California that makes outstanding Zinfandel, first of all, for me, well, first of all, you got to talk about, you got to talk about Lodi because Lodi is per capita has the most planting plantings for Zinfandel in the world. No one comes close to Lodi in California for Zinfandel. I mean, when you drive into Lodi, it's talk, it says on the sign Zinfandel, like it's amazing. They, they do amazing out there. Now, some of those, are big and bold that on that side that I really don't vibe with, but there's also some that are done with a delicate hand and I dig those. Uh, my favorite region in California for Zinfandel is Dry Creek, uh, like uh, over there in Sonoma uh, area. Those tend to be for me, the top shelf, um, like Zinfandel's period for the, for the region of California. Um, there's also, of course, you can, there's some plantings up in Santa Clara Valley. Um, there's some in uh, Livermore, um, they do some definitely in Paso Robles, uh, but Northern Cali is where you're going to find most of your Zinfandel. And, and these are places that you should know about when taking the test for the song thing. Like Lodi is the is the main one, but Dry Creek is the second uh, as far as like Zinfandel, as far as like production of Zinfandel, I should say. So good things, things to know. Um, Zinfandel is a wonderful grape. I, I'm not dissing it at all. It's just I have... I like specific. It has to be really good for me to to catch to catch my my attention. And my you comment. definitely you definitely don't like white zen. You definitely no. don't like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. My mother my mother used to love white zen when I was growing up, and um, I don't know. She just really hates the stuff now. And it's kind of the same thing with me because when I first got into wine, you know, I was trying all different types of wine. And, I, and when I first got in, I thought I was doing something with my little Behringer white Zinfandel, mm -hmm. sipping on that. And um, yeah, after a while, I started hating it. And it was like around the same time my mother started hating it. And now I love rosés. I just don't really like white Zinfandel. She won't even look at rosés. She won't even try rosés because she's so close to white Zinfandel for her that oh, she wow. just automatically throws it out the window. And I'm like, mom, it's listen to your son who's a psalm. Like, rosés are amazing. You can find some really dope rosé. She just will, she just looks at me and says, "No, I'm not drinking that. Get that away from me. Give me something. Give me a white or red, son." <laughs> so it kind of reminds me. Um, so you've been a psalm for a while, and I've seen you taste a lot of different wines. And this could be linked to baseball. Sometimes we we play against guys or we play with guys that they have different tactics of what mm -hmm. they do, go about the game that just drive you nuts. Yes. So. <laughs> You've been in various tasting rooms. Have you have you seen somebody that sticks on your mind that you look at them tasting wine and you're just like, man, what is this guy doing or girl? Yes. What are they doing? Or is driving me crazy? You have to go sit at a different table. <laughs> I mean, have you ever up and left before? I mean, does it get yeah. that bad amongst Psalms? Or I don't know. So look at so listen. I'm not really a guy who uh, dwells on. I, I like to you know. I, Live and let live. That's my, normally my motto, right? So anybody who has their like weird little quirks or whatever doesn't normally bother me. But there is this one guy I can I can think of that we used to all go out and drink wine together and stuff. And this was right when I was brand like not brand new, but I was just I I, I, I would say pretty much say I was brand new getting into the industry. It wasn't in the industry yet, but I was really getting into wine, doing a lot of research on wines, trying varietals from um, from Bevmo and Trader Joe's. Uh, trying to figure, trying to expand my knowledge, and we and this is before I knew about how to like really taste wine. So what I would do, like what we would do, is go out and we drink some wine together. And there's this one guy; he was a snob, wine snob. He knew a lot more about wine than any of us at the table, but he was a wine snob. And he used to do this. He used to do the whole like in the restaurant, looking at his glass smelling the wine and then the thing that used to drive me crazy was the sound he would make when he was tasting it he was just letting air in his mouth he was doing this no way come on he gurgled it he gurgled it at the table oh. used to drive me crazy and then fast forward to now you're looking at me and when i'm at the table i don't gurgle it but i do the same annoying stuff 
I try. I, I think because I've been I've have been doing this for a long time, I'm able to like do it lower, uh, like a yeah. lower octave, so no one hears me actually like letting air in to really taste it. But initially, yeah, like when I first started doing when I first started tasting, I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, damn, I look just like this guy now because <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm putting my nose in the wine. I'm not doing the whole sight thing, but I definitely put my nose in the wine. I definitely like let some air in. And look at the, look look at God. I've never seen you drop your head back and gurgle. I never. No, seen I don't you gurgle. Do that. I don't do that. That's okay. going too far. Now, if, you, if you did that, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what to you, say. What about with baseball, man? Like I know. I mean, I know we're a wine podcast, but I'm curious. Dude, was there like a somebody somebody that when you were playing baseball that you had? To, you know, you guys had like these little quirks, and you guys had these little okay. things like practices before a game that you like wear the red sock and white sock like what was did you have somebody that you went across that was doing that kind of stuff that used to drive you crazy uh no I, I would have to say i wouldn't say it drove me crazy but this guy i played i don't even know his name but guy <laughs> i played with in the, uh against in the minor league so mm -hmm. he would be on the on deck circle so uh -huh. he's he's waiting to come up to the plate so the guy ahead of him gets out so they announce his name, and he'd do a full sprint from the on-deck circle to the plate and then just stop all of a sudden and then look at the signs before he gets in the batter's box. Like, full sprint. <laughs> so I just remember looking at this guy like, where did he learn? When, did, when was the time where it came across his mind, you know what? I'm going to be different. I'm going to sprint from the on-deck circle to the plate. I'm going to be that guy. Man, oh, man. He's a little too eager. And, um, and, and, and the worst part about it, I don't think the dude made it past A ball. I, I, I never saw him again after that year. And that was early minor league. So he didn't do it for a long time. But my goodness. That uh, is dude, crazy. Uh, man, like, dude, I, what I, are you doing? <laughs> but but, he, but here's, here's the deal. Like, so maybe it didn't drive other people that crazy. But for me... I'm the, I love music and mm -hmm. I had different walkout songs and things like that. So guy gets out in front, guy gets out ahead of you or gets a hit or whatever. Now it's your turn. They announce your name. Why they announce your name. Uh, they're playing your music. Yeah. So you, you take your time walking up to the plate. You're, you're preparing. They're mm -hmm. playing your music. You're getting your mind right. You step in the box. You're like, okay, I'm pumped now. Yeah. But man, if I if I sprint up to the batter's box, I don't got no time to no time to know. enjoy the music. You want to have that swag when you walk out. You want to you want to strut a little bit. You know, like let everybody yeah, know I'm about to knock this <laughs> pitch out the there's, park. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no swag in the sprinting to the to the batter's box. Like, come on, man. But I mean, oh, I just <laughs> that that just seems like a funny sight, man. Like I, I'm just kind of oh, imagining yeah, some I, guy just running up to the play. I guess he's trying to. I mean, he's definitely a guy that marches to his own beat, but like. I think he was trying to probably stand out because in minor leagues, everybody is there trying to get to the pros. Maybe he wanted to try to do something like maybe everybody would recognize him. Like, oh, this is a guy who sprints to the plate. Too bad his game wasn't good enough to get him. It didn't match up. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like a sommelier pouring wine and drinking it real fast and say, all right, this is what I taste. I yeah. can't ask around. Like, so take, take your time, time. brother. <laughs> but, I mean, that's that's just what I had to share. I mean, it really didn't drive me crazy. I just rolled my eyes for him. Whenever he did that, I felt, <laughs> felt sorry for if he had a girlfriend in the stands or if he had his parents. Man, this guy. Oh. Fast. <laughs> that's hilarious. But that, that's Better just man. what came in my head first. But. That's crazy. Well, again, I want to I want to shout out Scout and Teller for this. This is an outstanding wine. Did you have any questions about this Zinfandel or on Zinfandel itself? Period. Um, not not really. I, I think I just. I just wanted you to talk about it and just educate the general public or whoever's listening to the podcast, including myself, who's being educated. I appreciate you talking about it. And this is one of the varietals that I, I think that I probably drink the least amount mm -hmm. of wine. So I want to learn more about it. And it's definitely and, one you need to know. And, and, what, and what you thought about it, too. So, um, the only question for me, I, I know I kind of test you a little. I probably test you more today than <laughs> tested me. No, man. Um, no, I just really enjoy this wine. I really enjoy. I really enjoy this wine. I love when, when Zinfandel gives me layers and complexity as opposed to just fruit. Because 
fruity fruit for Zinfandel is easy. There are a dime a dozen. But even though it says on that label that you were talking about the 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 the, the notes that it's a fruit for it, this has some earth here. This has some other things going on, some spice. Um, I'm digging it quite a bit, and I like that it's a little bit more angular on the finish. So definitely, if you guys get a chance, go check out Middle Jane uh, with Scout and Cellar. It's highly recommended by me. Um, 2019, even with the little kick of alcohol, it's structured very well. You won't even recognize it. Unless you're looking for the alcohol, you're not going to notice it's there because the winemaker did a really good job of uh, allowing this wine to speak for itself, but also allowing some acid in the wine to like really shine and give it a little bit more of a uh, balance here. This is outstanding juice. And I'm now you're you making my mouth water talking about burgers after this. I may have to make me a burger oh, after man. this. I did I did buy some patties yesterday. I went grocery shopping, and so maybe I will yeah do yeah I, I got to get to cooking probably in about a half an hour or so. I'm trying um, to stop. I'm trying to stop with like the carbs. I haven't really been eating a lot of carbs lately. Um, so I've been so I saw I just bought the patties and I bought lettuce, and so maybe I'll just do like a whole burger and put the lettuce on top of it because you know. Brother needs to get his beach body ready. With my lady's <laughs> birthday is coming up in July, and we're going down okay. to the beach. And so, like, I want to, I want to surprise her. Be like, "Yo, what's up?" You know what I mean? So, in order to do that, the gym, and and kind of curbing some of those uh, the sugars and the um, mm -hmm. the sugars and the uh, carbs as much as I can. So I, I've been. Well, hey, natural wines. Nice. The wines yeah. that you're drinking today, no added sugars, no additives. You're on the way. It. That works. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Trying oh, yeah. to stick to the diet. We'll see. So, yeah, it man. worked for me. Yo, this is another great episode. Appreciate you spending some time with me, Scott, talking about oh, some yeah, wine sense. and what we can do uh, to better know about these varietals and stuff. Also, everybody who's listening, feel free to hit me up offline or Scott offline if you have any questions for either one of us. Um, I love questions, so I'm always here to help. And um, to another episode of Step Up to the Palette. Cheers, Scott. And cheers to all you guys. Till next time, guys. Peace.